As an engineer, you may have heard of technical communication and wonder why it matters to you. In this video, we will explain why it is important that you have strong writing and speaking skills for your career and introduce you to principles to help you do so. So what is technical communication? It's the writing and speaking produced in workplaces to help people in their professions and personal life solve problems and accomplish tasks. Technical communication can help people learn about a topic, aid decision-making, reinforce or change attitudes, or motivate someone to act. For example, it includes a user guide that might come with your new television, or an internal memo explaining a new company policy, or a field report produced for a local government revealing the extent of river contamination. Some students believe that being an engineer means that you will not have to write or present much for your job, but that is definitely not the case. A study by Sales found that among professional engineers, half of them report spending at least 40% of their work week on writing tasks. What's more, a survey by the University of Michigan revealed that among their engineering graduates, 82% of them report having to give between one and five presentations per week for their jobs. It is clear that you will be writing and speaking a lot as an engineer. Engineers are a trusted profession, and your work is critical to improving quality of life, keeping people safe, and making the world more sustainable. When you are writing or speaking as an engineer, you have five main goals. Accuracy, clarity, conciseness, coherence, and appropriateness. First, in technical communication, you need to have technical accuracy as well as document and language accuracy. Choosing your words and document type carefully are essential for communicating well. For example, this includes using precise quantitative language to describe the thickness of a material instead of simply describing it as thick. Second, you need clarity, which means that your audience must understand what you are saying easily the first time they read it. Clarity includes using plain, simple language in addition to good document organization and visual design. Third, effective technical communication is concise. You should only include the information that is relevant and necessary for your audience. You should also edit your sentences carefully to ensure you communicate using only the necessary number of words and no more. Fourth, you must have coherence. That is, all of your writing must fit together through consistent structure, writing voice, and visual design. This is particularly important for co-authored documents. Finally, good technical communication is appropriate for the goals of the document, for your audience and their needs, and for the setting in which the communication will be used. This type of effective communication doesn't happen naturally. It takes planning and practice. When we write in our workplace, we have to consider five key elements. The audience for the communication, the purpose, the setting in which the communication will be used, the content needed to accomplish the goals, and the process we use to produce that technical communication. For example, let's say that your company has been hired by the State Department of Transportation to assess potential damage to a major bridge. To produce a clear and effective report, you'll want to consider each of these elements. Audience. Your primary readership will be engineers who work for the DOT. However, your report will have secondary audiences. Non-engineers at the DOT, such as those in charge of the budget, will also want to be able to understand your findings to know how they should prioritize spending on repairs. Because you are producing the report for a government body, your report will be publicly available, which means members of the general public will also potentially read it. Purpose. You have been asked to assess the extent of the damage to a bridge and provide information that will help the DOT understand how to prioritize repairs to it. You'll want to make sure somewhere in your report that your section called results is clear along with any recommendations you may make. Setting. Consider what is at stake in this situation. 
you are assessing a heavily traveled bridge that is important for many people's commutes to work and school. Any decision to do work on the bridge would involve a significant budget allocation. Consider how your audience may need to use the document, and remember that government documents are usually public record. Also consider the level of formality for your report, which is quite high here. Content. Brainstorm all of the content that is necessary for you to meet the project goals. What is the appropriate format? How can you best communicate your findings? What visuals should you use to communicate your engineering analyses? How can you clearly produce a document that achieves the goals that the DOT has set out for you? Finally, you must consider process-related factors. How can you effectively finish the report? What is your timeline for the work? How can you make sure you have enough time after assessing the bridge to write a clear report that your audience will understand? Are there any requirements from the DOT that you have to account for? Each of these elements is important to consider so you can produce a clear report that meets the goals of the organization hiring you to do the work. In this hypothetical situation, your work is important for the safety of many people who travel the bridge each day, so communicating effectively is essential. As you can see, producing clear communication about your technical work requires thoughtfulness and an adequate investment of time to ensure your message is clear. In this entire video series and playlist on our channel, we will share with you a range of tips for communicating effectively as an engineer.